Welcome back to the Book to Movie Club. My name is Serena and today we're talking about erasure slash American fiction. Last week we talked about The Color Purple. I realized I had never watched the original movie and I had never read the book before. So you can hear all my thoughts and everything <laughs> about every version of The Color Purple in last week's video. And you can also see all of my other book to movie comparison videos in the Is the Book Better playlist, which I'll have linked somewhere. So go check those out. But anyway, back to today. We're talking about Erasure by Percival Everett and American Fiction, which was just released in the UK on Friday. I actually just got back from seeing it so I could do this comparison. But let's get into the book, shall we? Erasure is a novel written by Percival Everett, an American author and professor of English at the University of Southern California. Erasure was published in 2001, and this is where I usually say this book has won this award and whatnot, but Erasure has not won any awards, which was a shock to me because this book feels important, which is very ironic to say, and I'll get to that point. <laughs> But I thought this was a really fantastic book and it made such an important point. And I don't think it was recognized enough, but just my opinion. So I had been hearing a lot about American fiction and I didn't know that it was adapted from a book until maybe like three weeks ago, honestly. And I think this happens a lot. A lot of the times that's not the first thing that pops up on an advertisement for a movie. But I'm realizing, especially in the past couple of years, a lot of films that have come out have been based on books. So I'll be doing a lot of these videos. <laughs> American Fiction the film was adapted from Erasure. And so anyway, before we get into the movie, obviously I wanna talk a little bit about my thoughts on the book. Erasure is a book about a black author who doesn't really like being defined by his race, but this is an important part of the book, obviously, um, named Thelonious Monk Ellison. Monk is his nickname. And he is put in a really challenging position when there's the death of his family and he is now responsible for the care of his mother, which is a financial burden that he is not prepared to take on. And so because his books are not making the money that he needs, he decides to write a book that he has hated his entire career in order to make some income. And he does. He makes about 4.6 million I'm like how much money 4.6 million dollars um by selling the book and the rights to the movie over the course of this book and the book goes into the emotional impact that this decision has on him I think that this book is absolutely worth reading and so I don't want to spoil too much of it so let me choose my words wisely <laughs> Monk in this book is a very brainy writer. He, at the beginning of the book, goes to a convention for writers and gives some speech that I do not understand whatsoever. <laughs> at a certain point, I just started skipping paragraphs because I was like, I have no idea what this man is talking about. And that is an example of his writing, the writing that he has had published. His family in the book talk about how they don't, they don't read his work, they don't understand his work, most people don't. And it's really a like, stick it to the man kind of feel that I got from it. He's like, none of you are as smart as me. So here, here we are. <laughs> the point he makes at the end of this lecture actually upsets a lot of his colleagues. And so there's a little bit of pushback from that, but that's the type of writer that he is. And even though his writing is not about the black experience, because he is a black writer, he keeps getting kind of pigeonholed into this like, African-American fiction at the bookstore. And he's like, that's not what this is. This is not that, but he can't escape it. In the book, Monk writes a manuscript called My Pathology. And it was so bad that I almost stopped reading this book because I did not want to read My Pathology. <laughs> The entirety of the manuscript is in the book. It's not a long book, the book itself, um, Erasure is only like a hundred, I mean, 260 pages. So the actual manuscript is not even half of it, of course. Um, so it's not long to get through, but it's painful to get through. So I almost had to just close it and put it to the side, but I knew it was for a point. I knew he was making a point, And so I had to stick through it, but the book is not good. <laughs> He knows it's not good. His editor knows it's not good and didn't even want to send it out in the first place. But shockingly, some publisher was like, we will pay you $600,000 for it. And so they did it. 
Some key points that I think are important about this book are his relationship with his family, obviously a very important part. There's a lot of loss in his family and he ends up having to take care of his mother who has dementia or Alzheimer's she's diagnosed with. And I, if you have ever experienced anyone that you know in your life with dementia or Alzheimer's, you know how challenging it is not only for the person, of course, but as a caretaker, having someone slowly forget who you are is so hard. And I feel like the book displays that and the instances that come up, it's just heart wrenching for me to talk about personally. <laughs> um, but I think it demonstrates that really well. And I think it's a really moving book. Um, and it, it, explains his motivations very clearly but it gets to a point where it's like bro you could stop and he chooses not to <laughs> he sells the book to a publisher and it could stop there it's plenty of money he does not necessarily need another four million but he chooses to sell the rights so that i can become a movie he chooses to do interviews as the author of this book even though he he creates this persona for the author of this book he, it's not published in his name so he has to become this character as he's talking to people and doing these interviews and it eats away at him. And eventually he loses it. <laughs> a little bit of a spoiler about the ending. I don't think the end is as important as the rest of the book. So I'm willing to spoil this part. Um, he ends up winning an award for this novel and he goes on stage to accept it and just goes blank kind of he ends with a latin phrase that i can't remember let me look it up really quickly the book ends with the phrase hypothesis non fingo which i'm glad i have the kindle app so i can google search what this means because i have no idea it's a quote from isaac newton and i still don't know what it means anyway <laughs> the book just kind of ends and doesn't show the repercussions for his actions really i'm sure there was some fallout that's not necessarily important to the story, but I would have enjoyed seeing the fallout of all of these actions. Um, but we don't get that, which is a little disappointing. But other than that, I do recommend this book. <laughs> the book was funny. There are definitely parts where I laughed out loud, but I think for the most part, it is more of a drama. And I think that's important to know going into the film, which we'll get into now, I guess. <laughs> The film American Fiction was adapted and directed by Cora Jefferson. He is also credited for writing for the series Watchmen as well as Station Eleven, which if you've seen my videos, you know Station Eleven is my shit. Watchmen was also a fantastic show, of course, starring Regina King. And so I was very optimistic about this adaptation. It wasn't his first and hopefully it won't be his last. This movie is categorized as a comedy drama I thought going into it that I would be like laughing out loud the entire time, but I think the dramatic parts that are in the book are even more heightened, for lack of a better phrase, in the film, which I think is important. It is funny. There are parts where I hope you laugh because I laughed, but I was also the only person laughing. But I'm American and I was at a British movie theater, so maybe they didn't get it. <laughs> I actually read or I saw an article, I didn't read it, but the headline was talking about wondering if the white people knew what to laugh at and what not to laugh at when viewing this movie, which made me a little nervous going into it because the parts that I thought were funny be were, were because they were outrageous. And I'm like, this is so crazy, but I could picture someone laughing because they think it's funny to laugh at a black person doing something rather than the real point. You know what I mean? But nobody really was laughing. So there were only five people in the theater. Anyway, <laughs> I thought it was funny, but it's definitely more of a drama. And I cried twice, but y'all know I'm soft. So who is surprised by that? <laughs> we also have to talk about the cast of this movie because it's obviously fantastic. Jeffrey Wright plays Thelonious Monk. Sterling K. Brown plays his brother. Tracy Ellis Ross plays his sister, Lisa. And um, we also have Erica Alexander and Issa Rae in the film as well. And that's all I needed to know. And I was there. Jeffrey Wright will get me into a movie theater alone. I love him. Sterling K. Brown will get me into a movie theater. 
Issa Rae will get me into a movie theater. Erica Alexander, I haven't seen her in anything outside of Living Single actually. And so I'm glad that she got me into a theater. This was an amazing cast and it was fantastic. <laughs> in the film, it felt like Thelonious Monk was a combination of his character in the book as well as the author himself, Percival. He's obviously an author, but the film ends differently than the movie. And that's when I feel like Percival comes in is like retelling the story in a different way. And I do not want to spoil it, so I'm not going to. But yeah, that's how Thelonious made me feel. <laughs> I might have already said this, but it did feel like um, the book did an amazing job of providing the context that was kind of in between the lines of the actual book. But not in a way, often that can be like this, this is a huge explanatory comma for all the non-Black people to understand what's happening here. It didn't feel like that. It felt very genuine and entertaining and I loved it. It really added more depth, especially there's one conversation between Monk and another Black author who wrote a book that he hated and that book ruined one of his relationships. He hated it so much. And that author had to check him and was like, you need to check yourself. And I thought that conversation was perfection. Issa Rae's is so funny. One of the parts I cracked up at the most was her reading a, a portion from the book that her character wrote. And it's just, it's hilarious. As soon as I saw that she was playing this character, I was like, I'm going to laugh out loud at this scene. And I absolutely did. And that was one of the times when no one else was really laughing, but maybe they shouldn't have been. Maybe it was just for me and her. <laughs> I was very curious to see how they were gonna bring the manuscript of my pathology into the movie. And I love the way they did it. I actually wish they would have done it more. So Monk sits down to write this book and two of the characters pop up in the room that he's in. I was like, are they gonna split it and have people acting out the scene that he's writing? What are they gonna do? But I loved the way that they did it. So these two characters pop up, they're doing their lines, they're acting it out. And then they turn to him and they're like, should I really say that? And he's like, no, and erases it. And then it's like, okay, this is what you'll say instead. And then another character is like, oh, what's my next line? And then he starts typing and it's just, it's funny. <laughs> Cause Monk is like, okay, next you're gonna do a really melodramatic blah, 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 blah. And the character like looks into the camera and it's like <laughs> being very melodramatic. And it was fantastic. I, that was my favorite scene from the movie. And I wish that there had been more of that or even just longer. The excerpt from the manuscript of my pathology is actually a lot shorter than the book itself, which I think was good. It was a long movie. It's almost a two hour movie, but I do wish there had been more so you could really feel how terrible this book was because people are eating it up. In the book, people are eating it up when it's being published and you can see why that's trash because you've gotten to read the whole manuscript. Whereas in the movie, you're kind of like, is he just being weird? I don't know if other people thought this, but I thought if there was more of the book, the audience could get a better sense of how trash <laughs> the book was. This is a slight spoiler. I didn't want to do this. I still want everyone to read and watch, um, but I want to acknowledge one part that I didn't like. So in the book, Monk's sister passes away and this is why he is, has to take on so much financial responsibility. He's taking on the financial responsibility that she had for their family. And so she passes away. In the book, she is a doctor. She runs a women's clinic where they perform abortions and people protest there all the time. And one day she's walking into work and is shot and killed by one of the protesters, which was heartbreaking to read. I cried my eyes out and I was not prepared for it. Um, <laughs> but in the movie, she just has a heart attack. I'm imagining they did not want to get as political about abortions as the book does because this is already so much about race. But I think a heart attack was just such a cop out. She is a smoker. She's in her 50s. She's a black woman. Obviously it's possible. <laughs> but I was like, it just felt so random that she died of a heart attack. So that's the one part of the movie I didn't like, not because it was bad, I just did not like it. 
I wanted it to stay more true to the book. But of course, I mean, not even that. I just, maybe there was a better way to write about this death. And that wasn't it for me, but whatever. Who am I? Nobody. Just a girl on the internet with an opinion. <laughs> there are a few other ways that the film is different from the book and that's why I think you should watch both. I mean read the book and watch the movie. I think both are worth diving into. But which is better? The age-old question. Which is better? <sighs> the book. I have to be honest. The movie isn't bad. I think because of the cast and because it's I think it's heavily advertised as a comedy. I went into it thinking I was gonna laugh my ass off. I was so excited to go watch this movie because I was like, I want to be entertained full of laughter throughout this movie. And even though I was thoroughly entertained, it was more about the drama than it was the comedy. There were some funny elements, but it's just not that funny. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's not that funny. Um, so yeah, the book is better because the book did make me chuckle. I had a few good laughs while reading the book, but I was more invested in the other elements of Monk's life, not just the process of writing this book and all of those things. Like there are so many other branches of his life that are written in this book that I think are really important to read. So those are my thoughts. Please let me know yours in the comments below. I look forward to chatting more about this movie and book with you all. And next week, Foe is out on Amazon Prime. And as I watched the trailer for that, I was like, this is probably based on a book and guess what it is. So I've already started that. Hopefully that will be next week's video. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure you do so you don't miss it. And I will see you then.